So winter is just around the corner, guys, it is at our doorsteps. So it's important to be prepared before the weather gets too nasty, especially if you live in part of the world where you're expecting snow. I know for me, last winter was probably the worst I've seen in my lifetime, and it exposed a number of weaknesses that I have since taken care of. I like to see winter kind of as a time to reset, you know, repair, and to some degree, rest. It also is a good time to catch up on different tasks and, you know, up your education, if you will. I tend to have a little more time inside during these months, so I dedicate, you know, roughly about an hour or so a day to either reading or watching something that pertains to homesteading or prepping to one degree or another just to always be learning. At the end of the day, you will learn a lot just through old-fashioned trial and error, but if you can avoid mistakes others have made by learning from them, then all more power to you, right? And also, before we get started, I'm curious where you're all at. I'm personally here, born and raised in Utah, so let me know where you're at or even where you plan on starting a homestead at down below. I'm curious. But other than that, let's get into it. So let's start with equipment. Depending on the size of your setup, I would bet that you will have at least one thing that needs a little TLC, whether those are minor fixes or even a major project that will likely stretch a few weeks. This is the time to get those items done. So when springtime hits, things are ready to go for you. The last thing you wanna do is start a race and have to tie your shoe, right? So get that stuff done before the winter hits so that you can kind of let it sit during the winter and it's ready to go for you. Simple things like oil changes and replacing worn out tires will help keep things in good working condition, but also will help extend their overall lifespan. You might even consider investing in some kind of protective covers like a heavy duty tarp, maybe a carport setup, or even a barn or a shed if you have the means to do that. These are all super important in order to shield your equipment from the elements which will naturally over time give it an unnecessary beating. So go ahead and get those things protected. Another thing to make sure you're doing is air out any hoses or pipes you have before it gets to the freezing temperatures because if you don't and you have moisture in those, good chance that they could expand and cause hoses and pipes to burst and then you have a whole other issue on your table. I just got done doing this myself on some of the hoses and water tanks on the property that we use along with the trailer that is on the property. Just a good airing out of the water to prevent any kind of damage moving forward. Finally, don't underestimate the importance of cleaning your equipment. Give your equipment a good power washing if possible and remove any kind of plant debris or dirt from your machinery. Plant debris tends to have the tendency to trap moisture and if it's in close proximity to steel components, it can cause unnecessary rust, so clean it up. So like humans, animals require food and water. Shocking, I know. So I recommend to have a year supply of both water and food per animal if you have the means to do so, especially going into those winter months. Now, a year may be a lot more than you have the means to do at the moment. So like anything, start small, have a couple months worth of backup if needed and work from there. But again, if you're worrying about food, so are they. So make sure that you stock up on food as you go into these winter months and make sure everybody's taken care of. Now, one of the biggest obstacles I had last winter was the classic problem of not allowing your animal's water to freeze up. Now, if you have a power supply that you're able to tap into, then there are a number of ways to prevent this, like having a heated water, which is exactly like it sounds. It's just the base of it that warms up and to keep the water from freezing. But I unfortunately didn't have that, so I was constantly bringing out new water, and that was just a pain, I'll tell you. So naturally, I looked up ways to prevent this from being an issue this year around, and I found a few solutions that might be helpful. Number one, I've heard of people using those big black rubber tubs and then putting them also out in the sunlight to help them prevent it from freezing over because the rubber naturally absorbs more heat from the sun easier thus keeping it warmer longer so may not be a total solution but definitely is going to be a lot better than anything metal that's just going to freeze right away i've also heard of people using ping pong balls to create waves in the water to help it prevent from freezing over if you try this make sure it's in a place where you get a little bit of wind to push them around or else they'll just naturally freeze over and you'll just have frozen ping pong balls like i had another one is solar now i personally avoid solar panels because just where i'm located it's pretty dang cloudy throughout the winter and so there's not a lot of consistency for sunlight for me to want to rely on it it might be a good backup solution in the future for me but as of now that's not the route i'm gonna go so try these out if you don't have any means of power to get to your animals but honestly if you do it's worth running an extension cord or something to the animal shelter area to have some kind of heated power um, to prevent the water from freezing over that's always going to be the number one solution i think so anyway learn from my mistakes and do some of those now the second biggest obstacle i had last year that i really really hated dealing with was i had a bunch of sneaky little holes throughout my chicken coop in particular that was constantly dripping from the snow that was building up on top and then melting and where i'm at it felt like one week it was snowing ridiculous amount 
and then the next week was sunny and water, naturally causing a bunch of mud and a bunch of issues I had to deal with constantly. I tried putting plastic and stuff on top, but it just wasn't the right solution for that setting. It was a flat roof. Next go around, I'm going to make sure the roof is at a slant at very least and also make sure that I'm doing a couple test runs to see if there's any leaks before it's actually winter time. And really you should be doing this with any of your animals housing is doing a couple inspections and test runs just to make sure there's no water leaks or holes that can allow wind to come through because if it's winter and it's cold and you get a wind drift it's just brutal. So do a couple routine inspections throughout your property throughout your animals housing to make sure there's nothing that's going to catch you off guard once it gets too cold to do it. All right another problem I ran into last year and take note because I'm one to learn from, I guess. But another issue I ran into was I had an, an inc I had an increase in rodents throughout my chicken coop area in particular. And I couldn't figure it out at first, but after a while I started watching their patterns every time I was around that area. And I realized that they were all nesting in the corner, kind of behind things. And one, they're looking for warmth, just like any of us, right? But also figured out that I was leaving the chicken bag feeds or the chicken feed bags just on the ground, not thinking much of it, but they were sitting there and gnawing little holes in the back of the bags without me realizing it, just having a heyday. It's Thanksgiving dinner for them, so why would they leave? I mean, it makes sense, right? So an easy solution that I think you should do if you're not already doing it is just get one of those steel uh, food bins that you can put all the feed into at once, have a nice cover. You don't have to worry about rodents or other birds or chickens anything getting into it it's nice and uh, locked away if you will and that solved the problem pretty quickly with the rodents well that and the fact that i had a neighborly cat come by and at first i thought the cat was trying to get to the chickens and my heart sank when i first saw it i had my chickens out roaming and i saw the cat in the distance slowly kind of crawling and i was i went into protective mom mode right there i ran at that cat totally get out of there but then i figured over time that it was trying to go for the mice weirdly enough Enough, the cat and the chickens didn't even act like they cared. They all just kind of did their thing when they're around each other. But that cat slowly started picking off all those mice and within a few weeks I had no mice around. So both the steel bin and having a cat around was a saving grace. Now if you don't have a cat as your personal rodent assassin if you will, you can always go the route of having kind of those predator decoys to discourage any kind of unwanted pests or visitors from coming in your area. Whether that's you know hawks or mice or whatever definitely will help. But I do recommend getting a feline on your payroll and making sure they're working the working the field 24 7 for you now let's talk firewood i'm a firm believer in preparing for the worst but expecting the best at the same time so you may have a automatic heating system like a furnace or a boiler or some kind of electric heat in your house but all it takes is for the electricity to go out before you're in some serious trouble right and we've seen that time and time again across the board so i would encourage you to get yourself a wood burning stove if nothing else it's a backup setup for you if push comes to shove now where i'm at i don't have an abundance of wood just laying around on the property i'm at at, you know just to chop at will if you will so it requires a little more due diligence behind it compared to others that just have that wood on their property that is easily accessible so plan accordingly and do this before the snow and rain get moisture into the wood making it even harder to use nobody's got time for that right first let's establish what a cord of wood is a standard full cord of wood is going to be a pile of eight feet long four feet high and four feet wide it typically takes about two to three cords of wood for every thousand square feet of home when it comes to frigid climates you know to stay warm so let's just say you live in a 2,000 square feet home plan on having four to six cords of wood ready to go for you just to be safe now you'll probably be okay using less wood if you have hot burning hardwood like hickory or oak but again I would rather have too much and not need it than not have enough and need it right now we talked about this with your animals but we may need to address the food and water for you and your loved ones now I might be preaching to the choir here on this one on hopefully this is something that you already you're doing regardless of the time of year but it still needs to be said like we saw in texas not too long ago when the power went out it doesn't take much time before everybody's in a vulnerable place when it comes to food and water especially in the winter time so start with a week's worth work up to a month and then up from there i mean the reality is if you're watching this video and you're subscribed to this channel you're probably already doing this anyway so you should be doing this just regardless but worst case emergency food and water would be your saving grace so i would have a minimum of three to six months supply for you and your family family as a simple goal to kind of start working towards and then build up from there. Also, stock up on any kind of medicines you and your family use, any kind of prescriptions, especially during flu and cold season as we're going into it. I mean, all it takes is for a new spread to wipe out the grocery store, so stay ready. I'm sure they got a few things up their sleeve, if you know what I'm saying. I've said this before, and it's usually the first thing I tell people that are getting into homesteading or prepping, is to start with just an extra gallon of water, some rice, some beans, at your next grocery store visit. Literally less than $10, $20 a 
hours depending on where you're at and you've officially started your prepper pantry. I mean, really, there's no excuses. So make this a priority, please, because if you don't and you're waiting on others to take care of you in the future, trust me, they won't. And you've just become a liability, especially when it comes to lazy preparing. Now, I suggest you do a fall audit on all your clothes on what needs repairs or replacing before it's needed. I had a friend that had a pair of snowshoes that he outgrew but didn't realize this until we had one of the worst snowstorms we've had in forever so he had to tough it through the snow in a pair of van shoes don't be that guy I mean, he got off easy. It could be a lot worse, right? So put on all your gear, see what fits and what doesn't, what holes need patching, what needs to be completely replaced and restock up on things. I just restocked up on some winter gloves, some snow shovels. Um, I bought myself some bib overalls that are insulated that I'm weirdly excited to try out this winter, but do it before it's too late. I hope this helped in one way or another. Remember to always stay ready and I will see you on the next one. Peace.